Do you know why you're losing so many matches? Because you haven't figured out how to play in this part of the court, the transition area of the court. You spend so much time at the baseline and not enough time in this part of the court mastering this skill, and that's why you're losing. Let's solve that right now. My name is Jeff Salzenstein. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, one of the leading online tennis instruction websites in the world. And in today's lesson, I want to cover how you can improve in the transition area of the court, particularly with your forehand side. Okay, A lot of players are getting low balls, they're even getting approach shots in this part of the court, and they're either missing that shot, they're not hitting it to the right location, they're not aiming appropriately, and it's because they don't use the right techniques, they don't use the right footwork, and they're not aiming to the right spot. So you're spending hours and hours and hours and hours, let me go back here, hours back here hitting ground strokes. And you think that's the reason you're losing your matches. Well, let me tell you, let me tell you the reason why you're losing. Because when I watch match play that's sent in to me, most of the time I see players really struggling here and they realize after I work with them and after I consult with them that they have got to figure out a strategy to train this part of the court. Okay, Stop spending so much time at the baseline when you're losing the bulk of your points in here, especially against very consistent players, people there that are called pushers. You have to get better in this part of the court. So today what I want to talk about is when you get a ball that's uh, short, Okay, it's in front of you here, and maybe you're moving off to the side a little bit. Okay, and I'll even give you an example of when the ball's in the middle. But I see a lot of players running up like this to grab a low ball. Maybe it's a drop shot, maybe it's a slice, maybe it just is dropping in front of them. And what I see is, I see a lot of players coming up, and by the time they get to the ball, they're on their front foot. That's a big mistake. What you want to practice doing is you want to measure it so that you can get up to this foot right here, this outside leg. And as you swing, you'll be bringing this foot forward. So it's called, I call it a run through. You're not really running. It's a jog through or a walk through. So essentially what you want to do is you want to train yourself when you're moving at an angle for a low ball, you want to get this outside leg in front of your body like this. And as you swing, you're going to step through. Most players are coming up. Okay, they're coming up and they're on their front foot. And they're really, they don't have clarity around what to do on this shot. So let me move this up a little bit here for you. So they come up and they don't have any clarity with their footwork. Let me do that again, actually. They come up and they're on their, I can't even do it wrong. I've, I've done it so, so long uh, the correct way. You come up, front foot, oh, and you reach and it throws you off balance. There's a number of problems with this. One big problem is that when you're hitting off your front foot, you're going to have a tendency to lunge, lunge at the ball like this. Okay, Lunging is not good. We want to have dynamic balance moving through the shot. So if I come up, you can see my body and my head stay very quiet. Watch my head and my body as I make this move. Now you say to me, Jeff, how do I practice this? I'm working, I'm hitting with someone, we're hitting ground strokes. I don't understand, how can I practice this? Look what I'm doing right now. I'm tossing the ball to myself until the footwork gets more natural, okay? You make the, you make the footwork more natural and you get used to just jogging through the ball from the outside foot to the inside foot. And you can just toss these balls to yourself. Record it on your phone and see if you, it looks like mine. A lot of times, again, a lot of players are on their front foot too early reaching for the ball. So one problem is reaching. What's another problem? When you get on your front foot, there's a tendency to turn sideways too much. Now your hips are blocked. So if you turn sideways running up to this ball and you're moving this direction, you're going to have a tendency to stay sideways, and when you do that, that can block your arm. So you can't really keep your hips open when you do that, right? Your hips are closed, and you can't really maybe get the angle that you want. A lot of times you're gonna to wanna to hit a great angle on this shot. I see a lot of players when they hit, 
they on their front foot and they just hit it straight down the middle and they get past. But if you can lead with your outside leg, now it's easier to hit an angle because my hips are facing more, right? My hips, if I hit this ball off of this leg, look at my hips, they're facing the net more and now I can steer the ball down the line or I can hit an angle. As soon as I run this way and step in and, and close off my hips, now I'm gonna be blocked on the angle. I can only really go down the middle. You can still hit an angle, but it's hard. It doesn't feel natural. That's why it's so important to lead with this outside leg. This is a situational shot where opening up your stance is absolutely necessary. So you're gonna avoid lunging. You're gonna avoid closing off your hips. It's gonna be easier for you to hit the angle. It's also easier for you to get in a better position after you hit the ball. If I hit off of this foot, this outside leg, and I finish the shot, I'm already coming back into the court. So I'm moving this way towards you here. I'm moving this way, but as I hit, I can push back. If I come in and I step in, then whether I come behind after or whether I step through, look at where my body is going. It's going this direction off the court. So it's very important to get the footwork right so that you can push back and get into the right position. Now, how would you like a couple of bonus tips on this? You'd like that, right? The answer is yes. Let me give you a couple. So the next thing I wanna share with you is about the finish. So I coach all of my players every time they get this shot so they never have to think, they never have to be reactive. I teach them to finish a specific way. So when I see people come in and struggle, sometimes I see this where the racket and the strings, they go this way. So they're just popping the ball up like this, not a modern way to swing. You know, this is probably the three, five, four, oh level doing this. What you always want to work on is getting that little hand turn, right? So that the hand turns over and you finish up. But what's even more beneficial is if you do a little mini buggy whip, okay? So when you run up, you see where my racket is? I finish with my hand in front of my left eye as a lefty and my right eye as a righty. So I just put my hand and my racket in this position every time. So when I run up to the ball, I have a picture, an image in my mind of where I want to put the racket. And if I keep in my hand, and if I keep my head, if I keep my head looking at the target down at the court like this, and I don't look to see where the ball goes, I'm gonna feel stable as I move through this ball. Now, of course, this takes practice, but I'm giving you the exact framework that can help you improve the shot. Instead of randomly running up and just flipping at the ball or slicing at the ball or swinging across my body, this little flick, and by the way, how did I learn it? I practiced, I tried different follow-throughs and finishes, and I studied the pros. I studied the pros when they get a real low ball and I watched how they did this. I studied where their hand went because tennis is played in, 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 with the hand and with the feet. And you notice in this lesson today, I'm focusing on your feet and I'm focusing on your hand. We started, we spent a lot of time on the feet. Now I'm showing you what to do with your hand and you just get your hand right here. Now, why do I finish up instead of across? Easy. I'm getting outside the ball, I'm getting under the ball, and I'm gonna make sure that I clear the net. That's the power of a little mini buggy whip here is that you get outside the ball, you create spin, and you clear the net. Okay, so that's what you do with your hand. Now, what about when the ball comes in the middle of the court? So you can use what's called a karaoke footwork pattern. So if the ball's coming at me and I'm not running towards the camera, running off the sideline, if it's coming at me, I'm gonna use a karaoke. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna move through the ball. Watch this. One, two, three. Okay, watch this. One, that's stepping in. Two, three. The three is that step behind. I had a player send me a video in about around this footwork pattern. And what she was doing is when she swung, what she was focusing on doing is she was actually going to swing, but she was bringing this foot behind, 
then she was swinging. So she had the timing off. And that's what I see with a lot of players, especially in this part of the court, is their timing is off with their feet and with their swing. The key is to treat this like the ball's coming to you, you're on your front foot like you're gonna step in, okay? All you do to keep dynamic balance, dynamic movement happening as you're running up for this low ball is you swing off your front foot just like this, and then you bring the foot behind, okay? You swing, then you bring the foot behind, and that's how you handle that middle ball. This is probably worth three points a set, maybe five points a set. All the video matches I watch that people send in, I see so many players struggling with these low balls that come, singles and doubles. That's why I'm standing in this area of the court, because to me it's more important than you just drilling for an hour on the baseline. You've got to train yourself to handle forehands and backhands when the ball comes low in the middle of the court if you want to accelerate your results, if you want to become a better player. So that's how you're going to work on your transition game on your forehand side, especially when the ball comes low. You're going to focus on getting on the outside leg, okay? Outside leg, swing, and then this foot comes down. Notice that again. Outside leg, swing, foot comes down. You're going to focus on getting your hand up, a mini buggy whip, keeping your body quiet and your hand up. And finally, when the ball comes in the middle of the court, you're going to work on a little karaoke where you swing and then you bring the foot behind. Now, I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. Feel free to leave me a comment or question below. Of course, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And the free gift I want to give you today that's going to help you with your footwork, it's going to help you with your serve, your forehand, your backhand, your return, injury prevention, mindset, you name it. We've got a free membership for you. I want you to accelerate your results. That's the next step to go with me at Tennis Evolution. Go ahead and click below to get this free membership or somewhere in this video. No credit card required, and it's also inside our Tennis Evolution app as well as on our online platform. Absolutely free. I want you to go with us, take that next step, and get this free content to help you improve your game. Thanks for your time today, and we'll see you at the next lesson.